Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going to shoot a battle report using Bill Hook's rules. This battle report is going to be shot with my 15 mm's. Um, hopefully, my project, my new 28 mm project, um, creating two small Bill Hook armies, will be ready by the end of next month. So we can have 28s here, but they're visually more um, uh, pleasurable to watch and easy to see. But now we're going to use our 15s and see how the rules work. Now this is not going to be a typical battle report, a battle report I used to do recently. It's quite popular where I edit uh, the action and I do a narration. This is going to be a step-by-step -step, um, rules explanation, showing die rolls, explaining everything. So it could be a bit tedious. I don't think we're going to finish it all. It's very difficult to shoot a battle report on your own, uh, explaining all the rules. Uh, but we're going to do two or three rounds, and then if you're still interested, we can finish the battle. So if we go very quickly uh, regarding the rules, the setup is quite basic. Uh, it's um, uh, with some restrictions. Uh, every commander uh, um, deploys a unit. Um, we're not going to do this. Uh, let's start by seeing the armies and checking the uh, army points and how the victory goes. So if you see here on the left, we have... Um, so if you see here on the right flank of the French, we have a unit of uh, skirmish crossbowmen. Uh, we have uh, a block uh, combined uh, formation of French mounted knights and then retainers at the back. The French uh, are the only uh, army that can have a block formation. This is for Gallia rules. So it will be a little bit different, not much different. Uh, here another block formation of French men at arms and French spearmen. Uh, these are commanded by two commanders who are attached in these formations and they are one star commanders, that means they have one order, that means two actions. And if we zoom here a bit in the uh, French left flank, we have again a block formation of men at arms, uh, commanded by two star commander and a unit of crossbowmen. Now, how many points is this? How do you... Um, um, count the victory points. Um, of course, you can kill the commander, the commander chief of your opponent, but basically, you count um, the uh, units excluding crossbowmen and uh, artillery. And generally, excluding, I mean, skirmishers and artillery. So the French has here, for example, one unit of crossbowmen and two units of men at arms. That's three points, three tokens. And if we go here, these are the two uh, mounted uh, squadrons and the two. Uh, a foot uh, company, so you have four and uh, another three, seven. So seven tokens will be held by the French. These tokens will be given uh, to the English if the English perform some type of actions, um, disorder, don't units, destroy units. Uh, these tokens will go back and forth until uh, one um, uh, commander loses all his token, uh, and this will be the victory. Unless, of course, obviously, um, you kill the commander chief of your opponent or you. Uh, uh, decide to withdraw from the battlefield. It's, it has no meaning. So let's go to the English and see. The English have a command and chief who has two, his two star commander, a, a, a company of English men at arms, a block formation of longbowmen and men at arms, and a cannon on the right flank. On the left flank, on the left flank, they have another block formation of longbowmen and men at arms, commanded by captain who is again um, a two um, a star leader. So let's go back to the battlefield. We have our card decks. This is a play deck where we draw cards and we play according to what is drawn. And then we have a special events deck and bonus decks that we're going to discuss um, afterwards during the battle. So let us start by uh, drawing from... Um, we're starting from the first the first phase, that's, I forgot, the first phase is a free phase where everybody is moving its units freely, uh, alternatively, one, one, one action each movie, it's, it's unit, it's until uh, we have shooting or hand-to-hand -hand combat. So let's roll uh, a dice and uh, see, this is the, the opening phase, let's roll a dice in pool, that first, and the French will start. So the French commander will move um, three inches. I half the distances, so whatever you see three, it's in 28 mm, six, and uh, except the command range, I think six is fine. Three would gonna be very small. So the English, the French want to move um, the mounted knights division um, and um, uh, try to uh, get close to the English so they can avoid uh, getting shot at. Um, the English, what they're going to do, maybe they're going to move this block, uh, again, uh, three inches, 
so approximately here. They want to go close to this uh, gap and um, start shooting at the French. Now the French again, uh, they want to move again three, uh, no this is four inches, correct? Yeah, they're going to move, no the French have to be moved four. So yes, they're going to move three inches. Um, this block formation of men at arms and crossbowmen. Um, and now it's the English turn. Now the English turn will shoot with a cannon to stop this phase. The cannon range is 30, so it will be 15 for my 15 mm's. And um, yes, it's 10, so um, it's very, um, it's in close range, so let's see what's gonna happen. Um, the cannon, as you can see, has is counted like has a crew of three. So every crew has two dice, so you roll six dice. Now what's happening with the cannon? The cannon doesn't uh, scores with a six, and uh, it doesn't have a defense. Uh, if the score is six, uh, you get kills. Um, also, you have to know that um, uh, the cannon, if you roll three once, it's blown up. So let's see what's happening. So we have two ones, very lucky, the cannon, but um, no sixes, so no hits. Lucky for the English, lucky for the French, and now we're starting the actual uh, phase of um, the game. So let's draw the first card, and the first card is English skirmishers and cannon. So again, our cannon uh, will shoot um, against the um, French. So the cannon again will shoot at the French um, uh, formation of men at arms and spearmen. And again, as we said, it's six guys. And this time is more successful. It was 1-1, one, one, but 1-6. One, that would mean that um, the French get one hit. And now that the English finish, I don't have skirmishers. Uh, so let's uh, get another card from the play deck. And that's the Burgundian leader. Um, that's the commander here. Who will move its uh, command twice? One order is two actions. And... Um, it will move the command twice, so we'll go at six. The faster you can go with the, with the with your, against the English, the better. The English longbowmen are very strong. Um, they can create big problems. You can attack very with depleted force. So it's very important um, for you uh, to um, try and close the gap because the English are quite weak. Let's put a token knowing that he did his orders. So try to close the gap, try and move quickly against the English um, longbowmen. Let's see again, now it's a bonus card. The bonus card has to be rolled. So let's roll for the bonus card and see. We have a six and a three, so the bonus card is for the French. Plan on a, a play on an enemy unit when it's given an order token. This turn it can take only one, not two actions. So that's a good card for the French uh, because now if our um, deck shows an English guy, no, it's a French, well, in the next English uh, will get um, one action instead of two. So uh, one order instead of two. So let's see what the French will do. The French commander has two order tokens so we will move with one order token the english the the french block formation twice he's attached so let's put an order token to know that they got their order and it will move uh, the crossbow man the crossbow man can move osh and shoot but with half with half their uh, um, strength but at the first at the beginning we consider that they are you know fully loaded from the beginning of the battle so um uh, it's uh, they can they can shoot with the full um, let's say ammunition, but because they're faster, they go eight. So I will move them closer here. Um, they move twice, so hopefully they can turn and shoot. Try to uh, shoot the English from the flanks. And here, where the French moved, uh, they're trying to flank the English, the crossbowman, and uh, the men at arms are trying to attack the English uh, head on. Um, let's see what's going to happen. Let's see now. Um, and it's a French leader, again, it's the French leader of uh, the Mounted Knights. Um, that's a very good for the French because... Um, so it's, it's, things are looking good for the French, you're getting all the orders. Uh, so the French are moving 4 and 4-8, and they have a bonus of uh, 4 for a charge, so that would be 2 in my case. So they have a, a charge of 12, so they can charge the cross, the, the, the English knights and they will do it because i want to avoid getting shot at 
So you see these two moves. The second move is the charge. They get the charge bonus. So they can charge. Very lucky for the French. He's attached, sorry. And they charge the English men at arms. And now we have hand to hand combat. How this works? The French have um, a strength of eight, this French quadrant, and they get um, half uh, direwall support from uh, the light cavalry. The English have 12, uh, they have uh, strength 12, uh, they get 1.5 dice per uh, strength, so they have to roll per, per strength, let's say. So they have to roll uh, 18 dice, the French will roll two for the first rank, so that means 8 by 2, 16, uh, plus half uh, of the light cavalry. Uh, light cavalry have again 1.5, uh, they are 8, 4, so there is another 6, so 18, um, 16, and 6 is 22. So 22 dice uh, for them and 18 dice uh, for these guys. So it's good to have um, 12 dice to roll, so let's roll first for the mounted knights. So we have uh, 18 and 6, 24, this is 12, and they're all, they hit with a plus 4, so let's see what's the advantage for the knights, if the knights charge and a counter charge, they have two charges and counter charges, and they charge it straight, they don't charge um, stakes, they can roll 1s, 2s and 3s, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hits that uh, the English, the French, uh, successfully or possible hits and now we will roll again this this is a great bonus for the mounted but we didn't do that well so another five so we have um seven now another 12 because it's 24 dice if someone doesn't like too, too many you know dice you have to understand that by reducing the strength of your opponent um your uh, dice are becoming less and less, so you're not going to have this number of die rolls after a couple of rounds. So another six, five, 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 and a four, another five, and um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means eight and eight is sixteen. I wouldn't really, I don't, I'm, I'm going to roll this as well, 17, 18, so 18 possible hits against the English who have to defend with a 3, 4, 5 and a 6, so let's roll 12, so the English, they fail this, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hits, uh, wounds against the English, and another 6, so should roll 18, from the hits that the French um, successfully landed. And the English succeed, this is good, but this is very bad. If the English were veteran, they could roll once. This is very bad, so another four. So five or four, nine. That's terrible for the English. That is a disaster. Six and three, nine. That's almost the squadron will be wipe up, wiped out. Uh, let's not forget that uh, I want to tell you that the leaders uh, cause hits automatically, so the English, who is a two-star leader, causes two hits, two deaths already, and the French um, causes another two. Another one, excuse me, he's a one-star leader. So let's see the English fighting back. They have 12 and um, 6, 18 dice. So let's roll 12, they hit with a 4, 5, and a 6, and let's see what the English can do to create problems. And it's a very bad roll for the English. 4, 5, and 6, we said. It's terrible. So 4 hits against the French. And then another 6, let's see the other 6, if they're going to be more successful. Five, six, seven, eight. So eight possible hits against the French, who will defend now uh, with a three, four, five, and a six as the English. So they defend. So three hits only against the French, plus two from uh, the commander. Uh, so let's see how we will resolve this. Now, the loser, and the loser obviously is the English, have to roll for a cohesion test. Um, they have to roll plus five not to break. 
Um, then, in order to successfully uh, pass the test, they have to roll with 2d6 as much as they have uh, more than the wounds they suffered. So they suffered 6 and 3, 9 and uh, 1, 10. So they need to roll an 11 in order for them to pass and continue fighting. If they roll a plus 5, but not 11 as much as the wounds they have, or more, excuse me, they will fall back daunted. The Mounted Knights always, always, always um, uh, follow through. If they roll below 4, uh, below 5, they break. So let's see what the English will do. A very, very critical roll. Let's roll with this. Uh, they need a plus 5 at least, minimum. So they roll a 4, and that's terrible. Terrible, it's a disaster. The English break. So the English failed the morale test. Um, they're broken. The commander is uh, fleeing with the troops. They have to move six, uh, 12 inches, or 6 inches in my case, fleeing. And the modern knights have to pursue, regardless, it's compulsory. One move. That'll be four inches here. I get two disarray tokens. Now this is a disaster for the English. Let's see what happened. The French charged. They uh, used their bonuses. They broke the English men at arms. They, well, the English men at arms rolled, but they broke. They couldn't roll enough. Uh, they had to flee with the commander. That's a disaster for the English now. And uh, the French, because they're mounted knights in Petrus, they have to pursue. Always the knights have to pursue. And they get two disarray tokens. So they have to remove them um, in the next uh, round if uh, they can. Now the English are leaderless. They cannot do anything here. This is a disaster. They can be attacked, but they really cannot do anything. They cannot get any orders except the command in chief. So guys, let's see what happened. I had to cut it short a bit. Something came up. Now this is a disaster for the English. Uh, the command in chief is dead. Um, the command in chief uh, commanded three units, three companies. Now they cannot take orders uh, from anyone. Uh, they will be in limbo. They can fight back if charged, but they cannot take orders. There is only one captain with um, his uh, block formation there, but um, uh, there is no order given to the English left flank. Now, uh, the French have 10 tokens, and um, uh, the reason is that um, they got one token for uh, routing and breaking the command in chief. Um, they got one and two tokens for uh, routing, an undaunted unit and the English men at arms were undaunted when they were routed. So the English lost three tokens and they have only two. Uh, the French uh, won three tokens and they have ten. So things are looking really, really bad for the English. Obviously, this battle is not going to take long. Now, I said a mistake at the beginning when I said that a commander in chief, if he dies, the battle is finished. This is not applying into, Ang into Gallia rules. This applies uh, only for the main core rules for Wars of the Roses. For the Hundred Years' War, there is um, different um, rules for winning the battle. Um, so things are looking difficult for the English. Uh, the French uh, have now... Uh, I didn't have time to show you many things. I hope you enjoyed the battle. Hopefully, we're going to do a bit more in the next turn, in part two. Um, the French knights are, of course, now uh, disarrayed, but... Um, they will be able to rally in uh, the next uh, battle phase. And let's see what the English right flank can do with the captain. But um, obviously the cannon can shoot when the card uh, is drawn. Um, but there's nothing else. This really fresh um, uh, block of uh, longbow and uh, English foot knights can do, uh, except um, wait the charge of its opponents. Uh, obviously, the, English, the the French knights and light cavalry turners will um, um, do an about face, even if they get disarrayed, and they will charge from the flanks. And obviously, the English will be pinned um, by the block unit of men at arms. Also, I don't know what the, I don't know if there is any meaning for the skirmish bows anymore. Um, 
Now there is no commander uh, to order the left flank of the English, but it's a disaster. Uh, and that's something with the strategy very important. You see, in the maneuver phase, I did a free move of the mounted knights. Why did the free move of the mounted knights? Because if I was lucky and a, a card was drawn before the English, I would have avoided to be shot at. And with two moves, one, uh, two, one order, two actions, so two moves plus the charge bonus, I could charge directly the English men-at-arms uh, without being shot at by the longbowmen. So this strategy worked. The French commander did a great job. He moved into the maneuver phase, and then he took advantage of the card draw, and he charged and broke the English, killing the king. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's hope we'll enjoy part two. Bye-bye.